we have right now a historically weak labor market and high unemployment rate. And the inflation rate is also high, especially if you measure it the way we used to measure it in the 1970s. I would say that the misery index, which is the, the combination of unemployment and inflation, is higher right now than it was for the majority of the 1970s. Not the, the, the latter part, the Carter years were still a bit worse. Bi existing businesses are closing down. And, and so the birth death model would be showing uh, jobs or businesses dying not being born. The U.S. economy suffered an unexpected setback in July as hiring fell sharply and the unemployment rate rose for the fourth straight month, with raised interest rates taking a toll on businesses and households. Employers added just 114,000 jobs in July, 35% fewer than expected, and unemployment, now at 4.3%, is the highest since October 2021, the Labor Department reported Friday. Hourly wages rose just 3.6% from July 2023 the smallest year-over-year -year gain since May 2021, and another sign that inflation could be heading closer to the Fed's target. Economist Peter Schiff warns that we are currently experiencing a historically weak labor market with a high unemployment rate, accompanied by elevated inflation, especially when measured using methods from the 1970s. Schiff believes that the government will ignore inflation and attempt to stimulate the economy and create jobs. However, by creating inflation, these efforts will backfire, harming the economy, and destroying jobs while worsening inflation. The increase in the unemployment rate from 4.1% in June marked the fourth straight monthly increase. Its rise from a five-decade low of 3.4% in April 2023 to now the highest level since September 2021, all but guarantees a September interest rate cut from the Federal Reserve, with economists calling for a 50 basis point reduction in borrowing costs. The sharp slowdown in the labor market had been flagged for a while in sentiment surveys and a rise in the number of people on unemployment benefits. Schiff highlights that the birth death model assumed 256,000 jobs were created by businesses that supposedly started up, even though these businesses' existence is not confirmed. This assumption significantly inflates the total job creation number. Schiff questions the logic behind this noting that if existing businesses are barely hiring or laying off employees, it's unlikely that many new companies are starting up and hiring in large numbers within the same month. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. I meant to mention was on the birth death model. Now, as I said, the government claimed that 114,000 jobs in total were created in July. But that also includes the assumed jobs from the birth death model, right? Now, there's some uh, debate as to exactly what one assumed job actually equals when it gets into the real numbers. I don't know that it's one for one. I, I'm not really sure. But I know a lot of jobs were created that does something to increase the number. Whereas if they assumed a lot of jobs were lost, that would decrease the number. Well, the number of jobs that they assumed were created by businesses that they guess were, were started up, right? They don't even know that these businesses exist. They're assuming that they were created. That birth-death model was 256,000 jobs created. That's a huge number relative to the total number that they claim were created. Does it make any sense that if the businesses that already exist are barely hiring anybody or are laying people off, that you'd have all these new companies starting up in the same month, hiring all these people? Makes no sense at all. Again, they still think the statisticians that are computing the birth death model, they all think the economy is great. And so they assume that new businesses started up. If they actually realized how weak the economy was, they would assume that it, it, existing businesses are closing down. And, and so the birth death model would be showing uh, jobs or businesses dying, not being born. So these numbers are way, way off. I think the one they're going to ignore is inflation, and they're going to try to you know, stimulate the economy and create jobs. But by creating inflation, it's actually going to backfire. The stimulus is going to be a sedative and they're going to hurt the economy and destroy jobs while they're making inflation worse, right? So there's no way out of this. This is economic Armageddon, which is, you know, why I've been giving the 
investment advice that I have. And by the way, our strategies crushed it this week. Absolutely crushed it. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said on Wednesday that interest rates could be cut as soon as September if the U.S. economy follows its expected path, putting the central bank near the end of a more than two-year battle against inflation, but square in the middle of the nation's presidential election campaign. The Fed chief, in response to a question from a reporter on Wednesday, said the central bank's only consideration was the state and direction of the economy and the progress of inflation back to its 2% annual target, not the political calendar or any party's fortunes. Peter Schiff finds the most interesting aspect of the recent press conference wasn't what was said but what was omitted. There was no mention of the national debt, which had just surpassed $35 trillion a few days prior. Schiff also notes that regardless of the outcome of the next election, the incoming president is likely to break the previous administration's debt record. This is because the U.S. is on the verge of a debt crisis, a topic that was conspicuously absent from the press conference. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. The most interesting thing this time about the press conference, to me, wasn't what was said. It was what wasn't said. There was no talk at all whatsoever. Nobody asked Powell, nor did Powell mention the national debt, which just a few days before this press conference rose above $35 trillion. That is the first time that that's happened. That's a big number. And yet it didn't even come up in conversation with the Fed, nor did they talk about the balance sheet, which obviously relates to the national debt. That wasn't even mentioned. Nobody asked the Fed and Powell didn't bring it up. He didn't discuss it. But, you know, to put the national debt in perspective. So Joe Biden has been president for four and a half years. And during those four and a half years, we've added seven point two trillion dollars to the national debt. Now, he is on pace to beat Donald Trump and set a record for the most debt added by one president in a single term. Now, the record holder for most debt by any president is Barack Obama, but he had eight years to run up the debt. Donald Trump only had four, and, and so did Biden. So Biden's added more, or will add more in his four, but there is an outside chance, depending on how quickly everything collapses, that Biden just may add more debt in his one term than Obama did in two. I don't think that's going to happen, but it isn't outside the realm of possibility. But I do believe that regardless of the outcome of uh, this election, whoever wins, and I still am thinking it's going to be Trump, um, but they're really selling uh, Kamala Harris hard right now, right? All the people that said Biden was sharp at as a tack uh, you know, now that, you know, she's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And, oh, the, the Republicans are just weird, right? It's just amazing that they, they keep doing this and the public buys it. Um, but whoever wins, I think that president is going to beat the record of the prior administration as far as the amount of debt that's going to be added. Because these records are going to keep being broken because we are on the verge of a, a debt crisis in the United States. And despite that, not a word. Nobody talked about it. Nobody asked about it because, you know, when we have a recession, we've never entered a recession with this much debt, not even close. So what are we going to do with the budget deficits are so high? They're higher than they are normally are during the recession. So imagine where they're going to go. This is uncharted, you know, extremely dangerous territory. And nobody even wants to acknowledge it. Right. Maybe the reason they don't want to discuss it is because they can't because, you know, there's no solution here. So let's just pretend it doesn't exist. Uh, so that was more significant to me what they what they didn't talk about. But the main thing that Powell was really stressing was he's trying to walk this fine line between going too early and going too late. And, you know, they're they just don't know what they're going to do. Right. They're 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 just dependent on the data which to me is nonsense because the data they use is meaningless. It's all rigged. It's always going to be revised. I mean, just see what's obvious. You don't have to wait for this ridiculous data to confirm what's obvious. That's why the Fed is always late because, you know, it's relying on meaningless data and closing its eyes to reality because it thinks this data uh, is, 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 is what should be guiding it, right? It's got like a kind of broken compass. You know, and it's just following it. You know, look up, look at the stars, see, see, where, see where you're headed. 
Fear gripped Wall Street on Friday as the latest jobs report significantly missed expectations. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the U.S. economy added only 114,000 jobs in July, well below the anticipated 175,000. Additionally, the unemployment rate rose from 4.3% to 4.1%, surpassing expectations for it to remain steady. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell highlighted on Wednesday that the central bank is closely monitoring the labor market and stands ready to cut rates if economic growth falters sharply. What are the potential long-term consequences of sustained high unemployment on a country's economy? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up, and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.